A few years ago, I was reading a book where Tim Ferriss says this, if we want uncommon clarity in life, we have to ask uncommonly clear questions. So for the next couple of years, whenever I found one that helped me solve a problem, gave me clarity, or helped me have a breakthrough, I saved it. So I'd like to pass them on to you because if they can help a normal guy like me just by asking them, then maybe they can help others as well. The first question is probably not what you're expecting. It comes from the best and the hardest three months of my life, where I asked myself this question every single day. If I could only remember one thing from today, what would it be? A simple question, really, but it changed my perspective because it showed me that no matter how bad my day was, and trust me, I had some really bad days, there was always something worth remembering. For me, I, I have to think about the emotions that cause chaos, right? The, the opposite of clarity and order. And I've found that most of those emotions cannot coexist with gratitude. And if I need that reminder, I can go back and read how despite a day of chaos and stress, there's still something there that shouldn't be forgotten. I found this next question in a book called Essentialism. Fantastic read, by the way. And I use it anytime I have no idea where to start on a goal or a problem. Here's how it works. Take something that you're working on. For me, it was a goal. And ask this question. What would I have to do to guarantee failure in fill in the blank, whatever this thing is that you're working on. For me, it was the goal of creating this YouTube channel. And then make a list of all of the things that if you did, would basically guarantee failure in this certain area. Then all you have to do is flip it around and write the opposite of what you wrote down. And now you have a list of what to start on. And I've found that this can illuminate areas that otherwise I wouldn't have noticed. So the next time you're stuck and you, you don't know where to start, try pulling this question out and see if it can offer you a little bit of clarity. Number three, how would I solve this if I couldn't add anything and could only subtract. Also in this book, Essentialism, which again, great book, Greg suggests that a lot of times we actually get farther by removing what doesn't serve us instead of simply adding more things. And I, I love this question because the natural tendency for us humans is to throw things at a problem. We throw our time, our money and energy, but sometimes the answer is simply to remove something. Removing expenses is often the first step in saving more money. Removing distractions is often better than trying to find a new productivity work system. So next time you're facing a problem, try asking this question before you jump to adding new things. Speaking of facing a problem, about eight months ago, I was having a uh, mini midlife crisis <laughs> and my friend just blew me away with this really simple question. He asked me, if you were another person looking in on your situation, what advice would you give? And I was really, really surprised that in the middle of what felt like a huge problem, I actually knew a lot of the answers, but only when I was willing to step back and look at it from a new perspective. And I'll be honest, I did not like answering this question. I, I wanted him to give me the answer. And sometimes we, we definitely don't know the answer and we need someone to guide us to that. But I also think that many times we just don't wanna be the ones responsible because whoever's answering the questions is often the one who carries the responsibility of that outcome. This next question, or kind of two questions connected actually, was, uh, was actually really critical when I was deciding whether or not I was gonna start this YouTube channel. It comes from Tim Ferriss and it's, it's great for anyone caught in the trap of inaction. It goes like this. What are the worst things that could happen? And if they happen, could I get back to where I am now? Let's take the example of me starting my YouTube channel. I was 20 years old and I was like, well, if I do this for two years and it fails miserably, I'll basically be exactly where I am now, just two years later. I realized that it, it wasn't gonna create any permanent damage and I could pretty easily get back to where I was if it didn't work out. So I did my research, made a plan and here we are. So for whatever it is that you're avoiding commitment with, ask yourself, what really is the worst that could happen? 
And if the worst happens, could you get back to where you are now? So maybe you've decided to take action, but now what? How do you learn what you need to learn? Personally, I've been an advocate for Skillshare. The reason is that now they have what's called learning paths, where they take a topic or an idea and they consolidate classes so that you now have a nice library of professional information. Like if I was about to start over on YouTube from scratch with no experience, that is the first place I would go. Even better, the learning paths are structured so that the classes build on each other. So when you finish one, you know what the next step is that you need to take in growing your craft or your skill. The information that I've currently been pursuing is uh, guidance in more productivity workflow. And I've been benefiting from, from Ali Abdal because he's got a class in there called um, Productivity Masterclass. And the reason why I'm such an advocate for Skillshare is they have one of the largest online selections of classes. People approach this differently, but for me, when I decide to learn something new, I almost always would rather learn from an expert who has spent lots of time consolidating that information. So I wanna say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video because it's, it's something that I already advocate, I already use, I already talk about it. And for anyone who's interested, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive one month free trial of Skillshare. Did you know that we humans always have a reason for what we do? And if you think about that for too long, it'll kind of break your brain. Like, I mean, have you ever seen someone do something and you're just like, huh? How does that possibly make sense to you? <laughs> and as logical as I think I am, I'm quite sure that people think that about me sometimes. So about two years ago, I started asking a question to help me identify why I act, think, or talk in certain ways. Here's the question. What would I have to believe to think or act in this way? This question really illuminated a lot for me because all behavior is belief driven, meaning that we have a reason for what we do. There's something driving it. It's, it's not arbitrary. I'll, I'll give you an example to make this a bit more concrete. Let's, let's say we have two people, right? One believes that people are generally mean and will try to take advantage of you any chance that they get. The other believes that people are generally kind and if you do something nice for them, they'll try to return the favor. The behavior of each person is going to be radically different based on their belief differences. And I learned that it's always good to make sure you're operating out of beliefs that serve you instead of beliefs that tear you down. Number seven, what specifically am I using to measure my progress? Recently, I, uh, I made a mistake, a uh, pretty bad mistake, and someone got very, very angry with me about it. It, it felt kind of like all of my progress up to that point just got smashed, which was kind of confusing that I felt that way. So I, I started asking myself this question through that process or through that situation. If someone getting angry at me makes me feel like my progress is void. What, what specifically am I using to measure my progress? And as it turns out, I was using the way people thought of me as a metric for how well I was doing. People that I didn't even know. And this really was a wake up call for me that I need to be measuring my progress off of metrics that are beneficial and accurate. Ah, sorry, editing Austin here. There, there's just one bonus one that I just have to throw in here at the end. It's just, it's just too good to leave out. It's this question, what will happen if I don't take action? And the only reason I'm putting this in here is because I, I recently came across a quote in a book that said, we often believe that if we just don't make a choice, nothing bad will happen. And I really resonated with that. In fact, a YouTube channel that I follow called Better Ideas, it, it talks a lot about this. That's the whole theme of the channel. It's that inaction is a slow death. And again, I'm putting this in here because the most important thing about these questions is that they have to lead to action. For example, I recently asked myself the question, what if there was a better way to plan my day and be productive? And it led me to discover an entirely new system that actually works so well, I decided to make an entire video about it, where I'd basically take that whole system, break it all down, here's what this system is, here's what I learned. So if you're interested in the answer of that question, uh, you can check out the video in the center of the screen right here.